With our fifth 8-bit Atari episode, my properly personal Nostalgia Trip games are just about done, with the last two early Emulation Days findings being featured here. First though, we have one of the earliest conceivable prototypes of Grand Theft Auto, a game called Getaway by Mike Reed, released through the Atari Program Exchange in 1982, which won the 1983 Atari Star Award for the best APX submission. Of course, compared to even the first Grand Theft Auto, Getaway is a very bare-bones arcade-like experience in which you drive around a large city stealing money and valuable loot, then haul your treasure to a hideout while being pursued by police. The more crimes you commit, the more aggressive the police will become, so there's definitely a straight link to how the GTA police aggressiveness system worked. To add to Getaway's already considerable complexity for a 1982 game, you also have to worry about having enough fuel in your tank by going to gas stations every now and then, and crashing your car into roadblocks will make you run out of fuel more quickly. Stern's 1981 arcade game Armored Car is clearly an inspiration for Getaway, although the setting is pretty much exactly the opposite here. Regardless of that, Getaway is definitely one 8-bit Atari game that deserves to have more exposure, simply for the reason of being such a key element in the development of Grand Theft Auto, but it's also a lot of fun, and a game I tend to revisit quite often in my Atari gaming days. I'm sure I've mentioned a few times before that I'm a fan of games by Datasoft. Well, from their earliest batch of games from 1982, the only game that I have ever played to any extent is Canyon Climber. And even that was, at least according to Wikipedia, originally released by Tandy for their TRS-80 color computer, and the Atari and Apple ports were released by Datasoft. Of course, the Atari version is the only one that I have actually played on real hardware. Much like Datasoft's other early games, Canyon Climber is practically a clone of some major arcade hit game from the not too far past, this time the obvious source of inspiration being Donkey Kong. There are three single screen stages in Canyon Climber with the first two having some clear Donkey Kong elements in them. The first stage is where you need to set explosives at the ends of each of the four bridges over the canyon while dodging somewhat randomly moving mountain goats. The second stage is a copy of the first stage in Donkey Kong without the burning barrels. The final stage is a basic platformer in which you need to jump over gaps along ascending platforms and climb ladders to the next set of platforms. When you reach the top, you're pushed off by a mountain goat and you need to start all over again with a higher difficulty level. I was never that big a fan of the original Donkey Kong, probably because I grew up playing cheap imitations of it, so I feel more at home with Donkey Kong variations than the real deal. Canyon Climber is one such item, and even though it's not even nearly the best of what the 8-bit Atari has to offer, it's still a game worth checking out, if only because it's a Datasoft title that's not available on the Commodore 64 and the ZX Spectrum. Continuing with simple but addicting, we have Dan Strikes Back from English Software 1984. 
It's a slightly weird vertical maze game in which you need to collect basically every little object in each of the game's six levels to get your hands on the great diamond at the bottom of the maze, but you are constantly being harassed by a small number of annoying creatures that can kill you upon touch. So, who is Dan, you might wonder? I didn't really even think about it until deciding to include this game on this video, so I took a look at the game's instructions at Atari Mania since I don't actually have the original myself. The protagonist is called Digger Dan, and the main villain here is called Brian the Blob. Digger Dan's earlier adventure was called Diamonds, released by English Software in 1983, which kind of looks like a simplified clone of a Dig Dug. Oddly, there was also a game called Digger Dan for the ZX Spectrum, released by Ocean in 1983, but that was a Space Panic clone, and it claims no relation to these games by English software. Anyway, Dan Strikes Back is a firm Atari favorite for many, and its creator Simon Hunt was inspired to write a third game to complete the Digger Dan trilogy in 2021. The final game, Return of the Fungi, as well as the other two parts of the trilogy, can be downloaded for free from Retro Unite's article regarding the new game. Link provided in the video description. Next, we have another game that was released through the APX in 1982, and it's the first game to be published from Bill Williams, the creator of such classics as Alley Cat and Necromancer for Synapse Software. The game is called Salmon Run, and the idea is to guide the salmon upstream to reach your patiently waiting mate while avoiding getting caught by fishermen and bears. Looks simple, but it's surprisingly difficult, at least once you start needing to avoid enemy contact. Based on all the design choices here, Salmon Run feels more like a game that should have been released for the Atari 2600, but the 8-bit Atari computer sound chip has been put to good use here to make the watery ambience surprisingly natural. There's a certain amount of randomness to Salmon Run, which gives it a good amount of replay value, even while it can also get a bit frustrating, thanks to how your predators act. Salmon Run was also released for the Commodore VIC-20 in 1983, this time by Synapse, and it's well worth seeking out on either platform. Finally, we have a classic of a rather questionable sort, Robert Bonifacio's version of Aztec Challenge which was released as two distinctly different looking versions in 1982 and 1983. The other Aztec challenge by Paul Norman hasn't been featured on the C64 episodes yet, but don't worry, it shall. I made a two-for-one comparison entry on the two Aztec challenges all the way back in 2014, so once again, a link for that is provided in the video description. Bonifacio's Aztec Challenge is, for the lack of a better description, a side-scrolling avoid-em-up, since you can't really call it a proper platformer in the commonly accepted description of the genre. The only way to control your player character is to make him, or her, whatever that is, jump three different heights. Fire to jump mid-height, fire and up to jump higher, and fire and down for a low jump. There are seven areas to get through in the game which will loop ad infinitum. If you get bored on your chosen version, the other version will give you different graphics and a notably different set of sounds. When I first saw this Aztec challenge, I admit to being rather appalled by it after having grown with the C64 version. But after a while, I grew to enjoy the simplicity and funny cheapness of the Atari version. I'm sure it's not my most replayed 8-bit Atari game, but it's one that I load up randomly, perhaps once every two or three years, just for laughs, so it deserves to be mentioned on my Nostalgia Tip games almost as much as its C64 counterpart. <laughs> 